Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Everett, and today we're going to talk about the updated environmental hyperthermia protocol, or M10, in our protocols. What we're looking to do is to start active cooling for patients that have signs of heat stroke. Heat stroke is very deadly, if not controlled quickly, and we see that patients uh, that are cooled quickly have better outcomes. So what are we going to do? First, we're going to look for signs of uh, heat stroke. So we're going to look for whether or not the patient has uh, had an environmental exposure uh, to a heat source, and we want to remove them from that heat source. The very next step is to look at whether or not they have an altered mental status. If they are altered, uh, we're going to uh, obtain a rectal temperature. So uh, we're looking for a temperature of 103.9. When we find a patient that has had any heat exposure, is altered, and has that temperature of 103.9, uh, we want to start cold water immersion uh, by either placing our patient in a temp bag or by using a TARP. Temp bag stands for Thermal Emergency Patient Bag, uh, which is just a body bag uh, that we are going to repurpose for containing uh, the water in. So we want to put as much cold fluid as we can on that patient. Now, the temperature is as cold as we can get it. So if it's ice water, uh, water that was ice, uh, hydrant water, water from our tank, whatever the coldest water we can get. We want to cover the patient about two inches, and we want to make sure uh, that we maintain the airway above the uh, water. A max of about 15 gallons uh, is appropriate uh, for these patients. We then want to cool them for about 10 minutes. Uh, we want to monitor them. So put the pads on, make sure you have blood pressure cuff, like I said, monitor the airway. And after 10 minutes, we're going to check the uh, temperature again. If the patient gets to the neurologic baseline or the temperature is less than 101 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, we will then remove the patient from the bag. Now, after 20 minutes, the patient has not reached the temperature or not returned uh, to a normal mental status, uh, we're going to then uh, transport these patients. But we really want to stay and play with these patients as best we can because active cooling, cooling them quickly, uh, returns the body back to its baseline status. Uh, it stops all the destruction of cells, uh, rhabdomyolysis, and organ damage, and improves their outcome, uh, which we've been able to show uh, through a case series of patients. Now, if the patient is less than 103.9, uh, we'll then pack the groin and axilla with cold packs, start cold IV fluids, and monitor that patient. Now, if shivering develops, uh, we'll use five milligrams of midazolam, either IV or IM. And we always want to reassess our patients and consider, is there any underlying cause? Uh, do they have hypoglycemia? Uh, are they septic? Have they had a stroke? Is there another cause for their altered mental status? But if we suspect the patient has an environmental cause for their altered mental status and heat uh, stroke, we want to go ahead and treat that quickly and aggressively. Now, be sure to uh, look out this for extremes of ages. And the very old uh, males, greater than 65, have a higher risk of developing heat stroke. Patients that are young uh, also can develop this, especially kids left in cars. In those cases, we really need to uh, monitor our uh, temperature and engage medical control um, by doing this appropriately. Now, drugs such as uh, tri TCA, tricyclic antidepressants, uh, anticholinergic medications, alcohol, cocaine, amphetamines, uh, salicylates uh, may cause the body temperature to elevate. And we need to make sure that we're only looking for patients that have had a, an environmental exposure. And those are the ones that we're gonna try and cool. They may have something else on board, it is extremely important that with these patients, we are aggressive with our cooling measures. When we cool these patients, they're able to walk out of the hospital and survive their heat exposure. If we don't cool them, uh, they can lead to severe uh, end organ dysfunction, needing to spend time on the ICU, and especially with the extremes of age, have a high risk of death if not identified and treated appropriately. Notify your, your receiving hospital, notify your uh, transporting agency uh, that you're doing this. If you have any questions, please feel to contact me or contact your local medical director.
and uh, let us know what you your thoughts. Uh, your um, when you actually do this, please let us know. Call the uh, two ten number uh, so that we can uh, record that these are being done and ask you a couple of questions. Work with your operations to determine how you're going to get the water to the patient um, and what the best process is that, for your agency to make that happen. Thank you all for taking the time out to listen today. Uh, we look forward to seeing you out in the field, making this happen and saving lives out there. Continue to have fun and get it done outside.